Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Last night, Relativity Space made the first launch attempt of their Terran 1 rocket. And, uh, you know, this is a small launch vehicle. It's a new entry to the market. It's uh, about 35 meters, 115 uh, feet tall. It has, you know, two stages. It uses methane or liquid natural gas and liquid oxygen. 2.3 meters diameter, it's got nine Eon engines on the first stage, a single Eon vacuum engine on the second stage. But the thing, of course, that gets everyone talking is the fact that they 3D printed almost all the structural hardware on this rocket. Now, 3D printing in rockets in you know, aerospace is not a new thing. There's lots of 3D printed components now in rocket engines because engines have all sorts of complex fluid pathways inside them. And actually, 3D printing really lends itself to doing this and minimizing the number of parts and therefore the number of potential gaskets and seals that you need. But 3D printing an entire rocket, that is what Relativity is doing. They have this printer, which I've described as being like a modern combination of a pottery wheel and a MIG welder, where this thing is spinning around and laying down the material and they can build entire tanks. And the thing about this launch is they were actually really interested to see if they could get it through all the structural loads of launch, in particular Max-Q. So yeah, the launch, it started pretty well. There was obviously a countdown to zero, you had this big flare, it was you know, this beautiful yellow exhaust as it ascended through the atmosphere, dropping what seemed like a bit more ice than normal, perhaps due to the you know, textured surface from the 3D printed material. As it ascended higher into the atmosphere, the exhaust changed color from yellow to blue. And I think this is because it's a, you know, a fuel rich exhaust. And as they go higher up, there's less and less gas in the atmosphere to burn off that excess. So that tends to disappear. They made it through the sound barrier. They made it through max Q. And I think that, you know, one of the presenters may have broken the sound barrier with their squeals of delight. Today, you just heard that call out indicating Terran 1 just made it through Max Q. I mean, after all, 3D printed rocket, Max Q, lots of questions. This was the peak structural loading and it handled it like a champ. It got all the way through to about uh, 2 minutes 40 seconds in and then performed the stage separation. And then that second stage lit. Or appeared to light and then didn't generate any thrust. We didn't see the engine bell turning you know, red with heat. Uh, it may, there may have been multiple attempts. We saw fire and sparks a few times, but it didn't appear to sustain anything. I tell you, there might be some thrust there, but really not that much. But you know, if it just continued ballistically, then if you you take the the speed and the altitude, it was like at seventy kilometers, moving at two point one kilometers per second, and uh, the vertical speed was about one. That would have put it up to, with a, a theoretical apogee of about 120 kilometers at about uh, T plus 420, four minutes, 20 seconds. Nice. Uh, and clearly it actually went higher than that. So there is some thrust in there, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe my math is just wrong. But if, uh, you know, the booster, it probably crashed down about a uh, 650 kilometers offshore, whereas the second stage probably went a bit further. So it does look like there was a problem with the Aeon vacuum engine somehow. Uh, and like, this is the first time they've actually been able to test this engine under flight conditions. So they did actually post video back uh, last year showing the entire second stage doing a full length test uh, at the Stennis uh, Space Center. So same engine, same hardware, and it handled it. It worked just fine. But when you're moving it now into a vacuum in zero G, there are a number of things that can go wrong. First of all, with no gravity, you can find that the fuel isn't, it, it, the fuel ports get uncovered or events get uncovered or get covered up and things aren't working properly. It's also likely possible that uh, the ignition started but couldn't sustain. Perhaps the, there wasn't enough fuel flowing in, and that meant that there wasn't enough pressure to sustain the combustion. Now, uh, there is actually a Twitter thread from 2018 where they talk about their igniter system used on the uh, 
on the vacuum version, how it can handle multiple relights, and they specifically say it is not a spark igniter, it is a totally passive system. And clearly in this case it was maybe perhaps a bit too passive. So uh, yeah, I'm sure they will be looking at about how this actually performs in a vacuum situation. Now, um, I did look and it does appear that there may, it might appear that there was some small amount of thrust. So it may not have been a complete wash, but it might have been fuel flowing through the engine but not generating any thrust. And the, my evidence for saying that there might have been some thrust was I did do like a spreadsheet with the numbers, figuring out the accelerations. And it does look like during the stage separation, the deceleration is slightly higher than a few seconds later when the engine is lit. And I say deceleration being lower means that there was some thrust, but not very much. The other thing is that from the camera looking backwards, you can see the engine performing fairly large thrust vectoring. And that was when people began to say this looked a little wrong. And if you look carefully, you can actually see a few lights down on Florida and those oscillate up and down as the thrust vectoring works. So that would imply that there was enough force from that engine to actually control the attitude of the rocket. That being said, it is a single engine. They would also have little uh, gas thrusters to generate uh, roll control. And maybe they have enough gas jets to actually give them full, you know, three axis control. Those might have been performing that. So not guaranteed that there was any thrust coming out of that engine, but there was small, some small evidence that it might have been flowing gas, suggesting that the pumps were working, but perhaps it was a failure in the combustion chamber um, because this is new conditions that they're just not used to. They will have to investigate this, and they're going to have to have build a whole other rocket. They've got one that's already working. Uh, interesting thing I noticed that uh, based on a couple of images I saw, they apparently name all their engines. So like the first flight engine was given the name California Chrome. And then around Christmas, there's this uh, image that's posted showing like a bunch of their engines sitting next to each other. And you can see in the backdrop, print status on three of the engines or five of the engines, I think. And they're all named after Mortal Kombat characters. And so if that theme held true, one wonders what Mortal Kombat character is most suited to uh, that upper stage engine that failed. And I think uh, Sub-Zero is a good qualifier since, uh, well, didn't get very hot. Yeah, uh, look, this is great for Relativity to get at least this far through it. The cool thing about Relativity, they've got a lot of people excited in them. They have got a lot of investment. They're gonna be able to keep going for a reasonable amount of time. And they're obviously working at an even bigger rocket, Terran R, which will be fully reusable, right? This is supposed to be their smaller version of Starship. They've got their own ideas about how to do this. And obviously we're gonna look forward to that. We've seen them already testing their Terran R engine, which is way more powerful. That's gonna apparently replace the nine smaller Aeon engines on the first stage of Terran 1. Uh, that'll be you know a few launches away. The great thing, of course, about 3D printing is that you can have each, each build be slightly different based upon what you've learned from previous builds, right? You're not really locked in, assuming that you can show that your changes aren't gonna negatively affect your vehicle. So yeah, um, as I said, great job Relativity for getting this far. Really hope to you, uh, well, ho really hope that you had fun on this launch, but uh, hope that you have good luck on the next one. I'm Scott Manley, fly safe.